Oh, good. For once, you brutes managed to escort a prisoner to me without too many visible bruises. Colour me impressed. Set him down there. You may unshackle his wrists. I doubt some scruffy street urchin poses much threat to me, even with his hands free. Good. You're dismissed, both of you. Leave us alone together. Did you not hear me? I said, leave us. I trust you don't need reminding how much your empress hates having to repeat herself. <sighs> Permit me to sincerely apologise for any rough treatment you may have received at the hands of my underlings. My palace guard is hardly staffed by the brightest or gentlest creatures, I know, but they're quite effective at knocking heads together, so I keep them around. Good help is so hard to find, wouldn't you agree? Well, I suppose I shouldn't ask you. You don't look like the sort of person who's ever had a servant. In any case... Let's proceed to the reason I summoned you here, to my chambers. Who are you? And what brings you to my domain? Your Empress just asked you a question. If you know what's good for you, you'll answer quickly and truthfully. I am known for many traits, but patience has never been one of them. Who are you? Hmm, a strange name. You're from some place far, far away, aren't you? I suspected as much. They tell me you came here stowed away on a whaling ship. They tell me they found you hiding below decks, huddled inside a filthy crate, skulking in the shadows like a rat. Is that true? Are you a rat? Really? Are you quite certain of that? Because you don't look much like a person to me, let alone a man. You look like a frightened little animal, cowering here in front of me, afraid to so much as meet the eyes of a woman that he can sense instinctively is in every possible respect his superior. <laughs> Do you know, it was my idiotic advisers who counselled me to have you hauled in from the dungeon for questioning. They were convinced you were a spy in the service of our adversaries. As if anyone would be fool enough to entrust such a delicate role to some timid cretin like yourself. Oh... Don't think I don't see that wetness growing in your eyes. Have my words pricked your pride? Have I wounded you? Perhaps you feel as though I'm being needlessly cruel. That I should be more charitable with you. Seeing as you're my guest? <laughs> well, that's precisely the problem, isn't it? You're not my guest. You're an intruder, an interloper who snuck his way into my empire like a thief in the night, quite uninvited. You're only receiving the degree of courtesy which befits such a person. Yes, you heard me correctly. My empire. Surely you recognise my face, no? Think hard. Is it familiar? Have you seen this stately visage before? Perhaps rendered not in flesh, but in stone or white marble, or oil paint on one of the majestic statues or portraits or tapestries lining the walls of this palace? Why, there are so many of them. You must have glimpsed one or two as they marched you down the halls. I suppose I can't entirely fault you for not seeing the resemblance sooner. Talented as the many artisans under my patronage are, 
No artwork in the world could do justice to the real thing. I suppose it would be rather impolite, now that you've introduced yourself, for me not to return the courtesy. I am the Empress T, sovereign and supreme ruler of this realm. All that you have seen since you arrived on these shores, every regal balustrade and balcony, every lustrous jewel and gemstone, every common man and mouse belongs to me. And that includes yourself. My, my, there is something very amusing about the way you're looking at me. Your eyes burn with fear and confusion. Those emotions I see all the time in the eyes of my subjects. But in your gaze, they're mixed with something else. What is it, I wonder? Some unspoken earnestness. Perhaps a latent, involuntary sense of gratitude that someone as radiant and beautiful as myself is so much as glancing in your direction, let alone speaking to you. That some inconsequential little ragamuffin like you, somehow, some way, through some fickle twist of fate, ended up slouched at the feet of an empress. Or is it desire? Look at you squirm. <laughs> Do I make you uncomfortable? Not enough to force you to mask your emotions, apparently. Or do you simply lack the self-control to do so? You know how serious your predicament is. You know very well that I could snap my fingers, should I have even the slightest inclination, and have you locked away in some deep, dark, tiny hole for the rest of your days. Still... You just can't help it. Your infatuation with me is written all over your face. Your love struck. <laughs> Don't worry. I have a weakness for flattery, one of my admitted vices, and I will confess to being a touch flattered. What's more, you've caught me in an unusually generous mood so I'm inclined to forgive your impudence. That is, if you play your part to my satisfaction. Get up. On your feet. Follow me into the foyer. Sit down in that lounge chair. Yes, yes, you have my permission. Go on. Oh, was that a little wine I heard? Is it really so comfortable? <laughs> Don't answer that. Of course it is. It's plush velvet. Probably the softest, coziest thing you'll ever sit on. Certainly, I'll bet. It's infinitely more comfortable than that cold, rough, cobbled floor of the dungeon. Let me take a seat right next to you. Oh, is that a problem for you? I know it's not a very large chair. It was only built for one, after all. I'm so close to you. Why? My body is practically pressing into you. Are you feeling uncomfortable? No. That's the right answer. Of course you aren't. Good boy. You know. I was initially planning to bring you up here for a quick chat, to appease my advisers, and then I'd throw you back down there. But now, against my better judgement, I'm beginning to think I'd like to get to know you a little better. There's just something about your demeanour I can't help but be fond of. Even when that demeanour manifests in such a small and pitiful vessel, would you like to share a meal with your empress? You look unsure, as though you're wondering if this is all some elaborate trick. 
<laughs> it's awfully cute. I'll concede that. But no tricks. No traps. My offer is perfectly genuine. Though, of course, no one's forcing you to accept. It's entirely your choice. If you prefer, I can always just call for my men and have them escort you back to that little cell I dragged you out of, and you can dine on whatever maggot-ridden gruel they feed you down there instead. That's what a rat would choose, I suppose. Dining on dirty scraps in the dark. But you said you weren't a rat, right? That's what I thought. But that's not what you need to say. Yes, what? You say, yes, Empress. And try not to stammer next time. Good boy. You're a quick learner. You might just have your uses after all. Here, you may finish what remains on that plate. You interrupted me in the middle of my dinner, so there's a fair bit left to eat. Oh, no, no. Don't apologise, darling. Though I do appreciate the impulse. That servile tone suits you. <laughs> I'm glad I had you brought here. Truth be told, I was dreadfully bored before. But now I have a new plaything. And that's always a delight. Oh, what's that bashful look? Do you not like being called a plaything? Or are you just too shy to admit that you do like it? Either way, you'd do well to get accustomed to the title. It's simply the truth. I don't know what backwater you crawled out of, nor do I care. But you're in my world now, and everyone here is my plaything. It's only that some are more treasured than others. However, that need not be a bad thing. I treat my pets well, as long as they play their little roles and keep me entertained. You only have cause to be worried if you disobey me. I confess, I have a bad habit of breaking my toys when they fail to amuse me. Oh, but I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. I can see I'm putting you off from your dinner. Don't be frightened. There's nothing to fear as long as you do as I say. Go on. Take a bite. You'll love it, I promise. It's braised sunfish with lemon and clover. Only the freshest, juiciest catch from the fishmonger's morning harvest. Prepared painstakingly by my personal chefs. That particular specimen would fetch a pretty penny at market. <laughs> Come to think of it. It's probably worth a good deal more than any food you've ever eaten. But here you are, enjoying it free of charge. As my treat. There are benefits to sharing the company of the Empress. If you serve me well, you'll come to learn that soon enough. Actually, don't use that fork. Put it down. You probably don't even know how to hold it properly, I doubt someone like you has ever taken any classes in etiquette after all. Here, let me put my arm around you and bring you in close. I'll feed you. Open your mouth. Do I look as though I'm not being serious? Ask me such a stupid question again and I won't be so forgiving. I said, open your mouth. There we are. Here comes the first bite. Oh, you look so adorable. My pet, 
eating my food from my fork in my parlour. Close your mouth when you chew, darling. You'll use good manners when you eat at my table, if you don't want to eat your next meal off the floor. Oh, it is so tasty, isn't it? Better than you've had in a long while, I know. Here, let me feed you another. Open your mouth again. It's just delightful watching your expression while you eat. You're so hungry. I can tell you'd love nothing more than to tear into that sunfish with both hands and scarf it all down like a rabid animal. But you won't, because you know you have to be a good boy for me. And that means, while you're here, you won't behave like an animal. Unless, of course, I decide I want you to. <laughs> Do you like me rubbing your back with my other hand? Here, lean in closer. I don't want to spill anything. Have another bite. Do you need something to drink? You must be parched. Have some white wine. I could tell you how rare and expensive this vintage is. But who are we kidding? Someone like you would hardly know the difference. Instead, I'll only promise it'll slake your thirst. Ever sipped wine from a crystal goblet before? <laughs> you don't have to answer that, darling. Let me raise it to your lips. Drink as much as you like. The whole thing if you want to. The wine should loosen you up a little. Take care of that trembling in your hands. Don't think I didn't notice. <laughs> your empress notices everything. Thirsty, aren't you? Oh, careful. Don't let it dribble down your chin. Let me clean you up. Oh, clumsy boy. You've stained your shirt. Well, it's not like it was in a very presentable condition to begin with. We'll need to get you something else to wear. And before that, we'll have to have you bathed. No, no, don't fuss now. You're doing so well. Don't worry. I'll allow you to finish your dinner first. Open your mouth. Here comes another bite. Good boy. Oh, I can tell. You're special. You're so eager to please. If only so it'll earn you more fine silks to recline on and tantalising food to eat. But that's not all you like, is it? You like attention from me too, don't you? You like it when I rub your back. And your hair, when I stroke your cheek. Don't bother being shy and looking away. Your face tells me at a glance all I need to know. You need not be embarrassed. You're hardly the only one who yearns for my company. That list numbers far too many to ever put to paper. You are, however, one of the rare few to receive that pleasure. I only hope you're capable of appreciating how lucky you are that I've taken an interest in you. Perfect answer. Yes, Empress, indeed. You are a quick learner. Until now, I was debating it in my mind. But I think I've made my decision. I'm going to keep you. You're going to be my new project. Do you know what that means? Of course not. You don't know anything yet. It means I'm going to fill that empty head of yours with so many wonderful things. 
and if you behave and please me, maybe I'll fill your hands with a thing or two as well. It means I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to have you cleaned up, made prim and proper, and you're going to learn to serve me just as I want to be served. Here, don't speak, just have another bite. Actually, you'll eat it directly from my hand this time. Oh, you look a bit uncertain. Are you reluctant to eat from my fingers? No, of course you're not. There you go. Eat it all. Good. Good. Consider this a microcosm of our future relationship. I'll hold you close and feed you the most extravagant treats. And in exchange... You'll be good and loyal and obedient. Does that sound like a fair trade? Oh, come now. That didn't quite sound enthusiastic enough. Convince me. You know, if you won't provide me with sufficient cause to be sure of your loyalties, I might just be forced to reevaluate whether or not you're a spy after all. And then... <laughs> oh, relax. Calm down. You should hear that shrill desperation in your voice. It's absolutely adorable. I'll have to make you beg more often. But I'm only playing with you, pet. Don't worry yourself. You're safe with me. I know you'll be loyal. I can tell already. Here, have another bite. Oh my, it's grown quite late, hasn't it? After you finish your dinner, we'll retire. Yes, I said we. You didn't think I'd be cruel enough to send you to sleep down in that cell again, did you? No, that's no place for my loyal servant. And that's what you are isn't it? You'll find your rest here in my chambers. Yes. Now here. Another treat is waiting for you in your empress's hand. Good boy. Good boy. I have so many delightful things in store for you.